The sounds of September signal the start of the season at One Jets Drive. As the final practices of training camp commence, final statements are being made as roster cuts loom. You're getting down to the nitty gritty in terms of cutting down the roster. So what areas I think are going to be the toughest decisions and how, how does it compare to last year in terms of you know, filling out a 53-man roster? five really tough decisions to make. It's kind of one of those little active roster, but on the practice squad, and then kind of holding your breath to see if anybody gets claimed. It'll be interesting, you know, heading towards the end of this week. In Florham Park, the final whistles of training camp means that week one is almost here. Building the 53-man roster is not the only challenge for Joe Douglas and Adam Gase. Injuries have taken a toll on the team this summer. The sight of wide receiver Denzel Mims and cornerback Pierre Desir is more than welcome on the practice field. The Jets are getting healthy just in the nick of time. And how good was it to see Denzel out there today, even though he's not doing everything yet? It was good. I mean, it's the first time I've seen him get to run routes live. So that was, it was good to see him moving around. He looked like he was running well. And so what did you do to stay ready, uh, stay in the playbook, that, that sort of stuff over the last couple of weeks? Uh, I did extra means. Uh, I did extra means with the coaches, you know, just, try to make sure I'm ready when I come back and when my time is right. Um, I just was on the field. I was uh, going through every play that they were saying. I had a script, just doing everything I could to make sure that I'm ready. It was good to uh, finally get out, be with my teammates, run around, play football. Um, you know, it's, it's just a blessing to be able to get a couple of days with the guys um, and carry that on into the season. Mims and Desir aren't the only reinforcements making their way back. Linebacker Avery Williamson is once again bringing the thunder to the middle of the Jets defense after a long road back to one Jets drive. It feels real good, you know, just being able to be a part of the team because uh, last year was, you know, once you get hurt and go on IR, it's, it's uh, it definitely a feeling of isolation. You know, you're not, you know, traveling with the team. You're not going to games, practicing. So it's like kind of like you're not a part of it. So it's just really good to, to finally be back. And especially having, having qu to quarantine this year, uh, it made the off season a whole lot longer. So it's just good to be back amongst, amongst the guys and being able to practice and, and also feeling healthy. They're trying to get off the field. They do bring the ball. Ryan is dropped again. The Jets come firing through with Avery Williamson. With the second quarter winding down in the 2019 preseason game in Atlanta, Avery Williamson's season came to a screeching halt before it even had a chance to get started. Shotgun for Ryan. It was like a rollout. Um, there was a bootleg. Um, and the member of the running back was going to the flat. Ryan. Gets out of the pocket. Ryan. I was chasing after him. All I just remember is I felt something hit my, somebody hit my knee from the outside and I just flipped. It's dropped back in the end zone, Ryan Hill. I know I went down and I was, it was kind of just like it happened so quick and I, I remember grabbing my knee. And an injured jet on the play. Avery Williamson is on one knee. And the trainers came out and they were, you know, asking what was wrong. I was like, I had, you know, felt something in my knee. And uh, I thought I might just like, just, you know, I might just, just kind of tweak something. And um, just really wasn't thinking too much of it until I got up and started walking. And that's when I was like, dang, I think I, I, think I messed something up. Meantime, last night, guys, in the Jets' second preseason game against the Falcons linebacker, Avery Williamson injured his knee. 
After further testing, Williamson tore it. He's out for the season. Once I found that out, I, mean, I, was, I couldn't believe it because I never, never got injured, like a major injury before. So uh, it was definitely tough, tough news to take, man. This is a big blow for them because Avery uh, was one of their most consistent and reliable performers. He only missed five defensive snaps last season, which is pretty incredible for an inside linebacker. What was that conversation like? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's as positive as he can get right now. You know, I know it's going to be some ups and downs, but I told him we're going to need him to, to help these young guys, and we're going to need him around the building. We're going to need him around everybody. We, you know, we talked about kind of a plan – you know, once he gets kind of on his feet and as far as what we want to do with him, and, you know, with meetings and trying to help him just keep learning as a football player. About to get this knee work done. Ready to do it. Nervous, but uh, confident. Dr. Andrews is going to get me right. So ready to go ahead and get it done and start this recovery process. It's going to be a journey, but I'm ready. Hey, all I know is that I'm about to go under, but the curl's still popping. Ooh. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's about that time. Good morning, good morning. Um, first day uh, post-surgery. And feeling pretty good, just ate breakfast, about to go to rehab, and uh, I'm gonna try to get this thing and bend a little bit, so I know I'm gonna be probably screaming and holler <laughs> some, but we make it through it, and I'm uh, glad the surgery went good. It's, it's definitely tough when I, when I started on like that fourth or fifth day of therapy, and feeling that pain when they start bending my knee, and like kind of realizing like, damn, I'm gonna have to do this for like, <laughs> I don't know how long, like a year. And I mean, I kind of had, I had some points where I was like ready to just, just give up. But um, man, I just, just kept on pushing. Jet Nation, what's going on? I just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support that y'all have been giving me over the past couple weeks, you know. It means so much. And uh, ready to start on this rehab process. And, um, you know, just ready to get back on that field in 2020. And, and uh, you know, super exciting, man. I definitely love y'all for that. You know, y'all are, man, best fans in football. So, appreciate it. It goes a long way. And uh, y'all just continue to keep praying for me. Most importantly, jet up. Looking back, you know, I, I made sure that I just came to work every day and uh, just rehab as hard as I could. Uh, made sure that, you know, I wasn't going backwards. 90. Yell it out, Paul. 100. 105. Perfect. 110. Easy. Nice and slow. One. Get his face. Ah. Stand back. Yeah. 118. Yeah, 120. Here we go. 20. I'm like, now I can't go out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, year six and, you know, be done. Like, I, I can't go out like that. So. Uh, just, just made it a, a motive to like make sure I'm back and show people that I'm still the same player that I was before because I feel like I still got a lot of football left to play. You know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Avery, how's it feeling, man? Solid. Back, 2020. Faster than ever. How's it feel to have that uniform back on? Feels real good. Finally, man, it's been a minute. <laughs> Uh, just ready to get out there and just put it to use now. Super excited. 
After nearly a full year of rehab and recovery, Avery Williamson is back to doing what he does best. He's healthy and ready to help bring the juice to the Jets' defense this season. Work, work. Get it I feel really good. You know, that's, that's been the thought in my head since I got hurt. Like, how am I going to be able to take on a block or how am I going to be able to drop back, cut downhill to make a play? You know, all those thoughts going on in my head, like thinking, can I do it? Will I be able to do it? Will I be able to do it at the same speed, intensity that I was before? First day, just being able to get out there, full pads. This was a reminder for me that I can, I can do it. Just excited to, just to be able to go out there and play fast again and, and uh, you know, go make plays. I feel like everybody's got a point to prove. We're just ready to come out in week one and, and um, can be ready to, to uh, go out there and get a win against Buffalo. We're definitely hungry, and we got some guys on the team that, you know, gritty, got a chip on our shoulder and is ready to go play. After the players left everything they had on the practice field for over a month, the decisions rest in the hands of Joe Douglas and Adam Gase. For the Jets' general manager, determining who will make the roster is the ultimate numbers game. It takes a lot of communication with our coaching staff, um, with our head coach, and a lot of personnel meetings went into it. And ultimately, we're trying to get the best 53 guys on the field that really embody what we want to uh, represent us on the field. So. Um, you know, guys that are passionate about ball, guys that are highly competitive, guys that are smart. A lot of those decisions are difficult and, um, you know, it takes a lot of open dialogue and open communication and, and, we, and we had that. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we want to put together the group of guys that's, that's going to be best for, for our team, you know, and, and, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, like I said before, that their, comp their competitiveness, their toughness, their mentality uh, and their versatility. Entering his second season, Douglas's vision is coming into focus at one Jets drive. I think you see it on a daily basis when, um, you know, even in the meeting rooms, uh, there's, there's guys, the, the maturity, the professionalism of guys, um, you know, guy, guys that just, they, they care. They care, about, they care about this game. They, they care about winning. They care about each other. And they're looking to build relationships with each other in the locker room. So that, that's, a, that's a very intriguing thing to see and a great thing to see from our group. I love the spirit in our practices. You saw how passionate our guys, our guys were playing player player out. And sometimes you saw tempers flare up. And, you know, that, that, that just shows the pride and the competitiveness that this group of men have um, and, how much, and, how, and how hard they compete. But at the end of the day, they respect, they respect each other and they get along. And I feel like we have a really good uh, group of men and um, uh, it was good to see the chemistry come together throughout this last month and change. I feel really good about the progress that was made up front and uh, that was always going to be a priority for us. You know, offense and defensive line and uh, specifically with our offensive line. I think, I think you saw with the, with the new additions, um, whether they were veterans or rookies, everyone came in uh, with, a, with a professional, uh, mature, competitive mindset. Um, just smart, tough, athletic guys. They competed, play in, play out. And, you, and like I said before, we have guys that can play multiple spots and, and move around the front. So the, that versatility is huge and it's gonna help us throughout the season. Certainly a winding road and certainly a, a lot of obstacles were placed uh, before this group, you know, not just the players, but the staff and the coaches. And so far, everyone's risen to the challenges. Everyone's made, made the, the right decisions to uh, keep us here and keep us playing this game. So I'm um, really proud of, of the decisions that 
everyone's made when they left this building. So to put us in position to go up in Buffalo, go up to Buffalo and compete in week one. I can't wait. I know these guys, I mean, hey, we're playing football and, and I know um, a few months ago, there were probably a lot of people who think that we weren't gonna be at this point. And just watching these guys compete on that, on that grass for the last month, um, it, it, fire, it fires everybody up because you know, like I said, there's a, there's a group of guys that are hungry and motivated to prove a lot of people wrong. After navigating the most unprecedented offseason in NFL history, the 2020 New York Jets will now write their story, ready to prove they are stronger, faster, more unified than ever before. The time is now. The coronavirus pandemic, as you know, is dramatically changing our everyday lives. The whole world dealing with the fallout from the coronavirus. What impact will this have? And it certainly will have some on free agency. We, we, need, we need to have a strong offensive line. We have, to, we have to do a good job of taking care of Sam. Joe Douglas told Mike and Chris Darnold, Sam's parents, that he vowed he would get playmakers and protection for their son. Well, he is a man of his word. We are going to improve multiple positions. For the first time, the draft will take place virtually. And Joe, this is Joe Douglas with the Jets. Makai Becton is a guy that gives Sam Darnold comfort. It's a downfield shot. Mims has got it. Well, Michael P. Ryan tight ropes the sideline. And it's intercepted by Ashton Davis. I feel like everybody was able to check their ego at the door and really have tough conversations and at the end of the day, find the right players to help the New York Jets. This training camp is gonna look like no other training camp before. How can we mitigate risk and try to keep players, coaches, and staff as safe as possible? Our biggest thing is it's communication. He's outworking everybody. Let's go, Jets on three, one, two, three, Jets! Yeah. You know, we're at the top of the profession in the world. We have to be able to adapt to whatever comes up. I love how like nobody really gives us a chance, and you got to use that for fuel, too. When I do not want to get up, I think about my teammates. I think about my family. I think about everybody that's dependent on me. Everybody, you know, that doubt us and everything, we can't pay that too much attention. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we just go out there and prove everybody wrong. Start of our 2020 season, baby, has come upon us. Let's run! You're not trying to win a Super Bowl every year. You shouldn't be in this business.